Today I want to talk about polymers, but what exactly is a polymer? Well, I'd like to try and show you. I've raised my Christmas decorations to try to explain this. Now, polymer, from the Greek derivation, means many parts. Poly, many, mer, parts. So you can imagine this Christmas decoration, all of these are the individual parts. If I take one of these off, that would be my monomer. Okay, and if I string those all together, I produce a polymer. You're already used to seeing natural polymers. If we take something like starch, starch is a polymer, and the monomer of starch is glucose. If we take protein, protein is a polymer, and the monomer there is amino acid. So we have natural polymers, but I want to think about making man-made polymers, which we, re we normally refer to as plastics. Now, the raw material for plastics is crude oil, which is made up of hydrocarbon chains. Let's have a look at one of those. What I have here is an octane molecule. Now, I refer to this as a saturated hydrocarbon because it only contains single bonds. It's saturated because it's got as many hydrogens as it can possibly take. Now, if you want to produce energy by burning this, reacting it with oxygen, that's great, but otherwise it's not really very reactive. So this isn't very useful. What we have to do with crude oil then is we have to heat it up and crack it into small molecules, and in doing so, we produce a double bond, which is very important. Now, I want to think about making polythene. We're all used to polythene bags, and that comes from reacting the molecule ethene to make polythene. What I have here is some ethene molecules. Now, these we refer to as unsaturated hydrocarbons because we can break these bonds and add other things to it. We can add more hydrogen. But better than that, we can take two ethene molecules and under the right conditions react these together such that these double covalent bonds break and they start to attach together in a chain. And then another ethene molecule will attach in another chain. And so the process continues until we produce a very large hydrocarbon chain. Now you might think that I'm there with my polythene, but this isn't nearly long enough. You need over a thousand of these black carbon atoms in your polythene before you can say it's a polythene molecule. So polythene is the polymer of the monomer ethene. One of the things about polymers is that we can produce polymers of lots of different properties simply by adjusting things to do with the chains that make up the polymers. Let's take the example of these two. Okay, we have the polymer polythene and we also have wax. Now, chemically, these are very similar, but this has much longer chains than this one. And so if I try to break the candle, it's quite easy to do. But taking this polythene, which is much thinner, very difficult for me to break it. And that's down to the length of the chains in each of these materials. Now I'd like to compare it with pasta. And here's some I cooked earlier. Now if we consider the short chain lengths that we have in the wax, it's a bit like macaroni. And if I want to separate the bits of macaroni out, it's quite easy to do so. Now what we're interested in here is not the bonds along the molecule, but the intermolecular forces between the molecules that we need to separate out in terms of breaking the material. If we take the spaghetti, the polymer, polythene, to try and separate out all these strands is quite difficult because they're much longer and therefore there's more of them, the length, to stick together and so it's much more difficult to break the polythene than it is to break the wax. In conclusion, a polymer is a long chain of single monomers. Crude oil is the source for our man-made plastics, but unfortunately this saturated hydrocarbon is no good, it only has single bonds. So you have to break these up into smaller molecules, which then have this double bond. This is an unsaturated molecule. These reactive double bonds break apart, join together, and then you get your long chain of polythene. The properties of polymers depend on the chain length. If we take short chains, then the intermolecular forces aren't very strong, so it's not a very strong polymer, and it has a low melting point. 
if we have longer chain polymers then the intermolecular forces are bigger so it's much harder to break and it has a higher melting point.